Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I hope everyone is doing great out there. On today's episode, I have a question for you. What is the proper workflow for Denoise AI and Sharpen AI? Denoise AI first or Sharpen AI first? I get this question asked a lot. Does it even matter? And on today's episode, the case will be solved. You'll know for sure. We'll do the test. Stay tuned and let's get started. I am starting out in Photoshop. Now I have this image of a flower here. This is my image of a flower. Uh, did some very light uh, adjustments in Lightroom. No noise reduction or sharpening on it. I'll zoom into it so you can see it's kind of soft. It's a very high ISO image. ISO 2500, so you can see there's a lot of noise. So what am I zoomed in at here? I'm zoomed into uh, 249%. Let's zoom into 300%, so you can really see the noise and how soft it really is. Okay, so what I've done was I duplicated my background layer and called it Denoise AI. So the first scenario, I'm going to send it into Denoise AI first, and then after it comes back in, I'll duplicate that layer and then I'll send it into Sharpen AI. So that'll be the first scenario. The second scenario I already have done for you. And uh, that would be Sharpen AI first and then Denoise AI second. And then we'll compare the two side by side and we will solve this case. Which should you use first, Denoise AI or Sharpen AI? Let me go ahead and use my Tony Kuiper action to... Uh, bring this image back to fit the screen here. I will do some Tony Kuiper videos. I know a lot of people have been saying, Dave, please do some more Tony Kuiper videos. I will. I do love the Tony Kuiper actions and the uh, luminosity masks. All right, so let's go ahead and come up to filter and we're gonna launch uh, Denoise AI. I almost said Sharpen AI, but I wanna launch Denoise AI. And here we are inside of Denoise AI. And now this uh, tutorial today is not how to use Denoise AI, although you'll see me using it right here in Sharpen AI, but it's really which is the best workflow, Denoise AI first or Sharpen AI first, or does it matter, okay? But I'm going to use my two uh, preferred modes here, Denoise AI or Low Light. Some folks out there like to use AI Clear. I don't really use it because I feel Denoise AI and Low Light are the best modes to go, but that's my preference. You may have your own. I have things set in the auto mode right here. Now, I'm not going to be using um, sharpness enhancements on, on this um, tutorial because, again, I'm going to use uh, Sharpen AI to do the sharpening because I have an image, as you'll recall, with a sharpening problem. It's kind of slightly out of focus. We're going to check the Denoise AI mode first, and here we go. And I can see, and I'm zoomed into 200%, there's a little bit of noise right around here. And let me try the low light mode here. Yeah, the noise seems to clean up around here a little bit. Now, I do not want to add any enhanced sharpness on this. So, and I'm going to show you a little bug that I found in the program. Let me know if you have this bug in the comments section below. But if I take the enhanced sharpness the whole way off, watch what happens. You'll see noise appear back in the image. You see that? And that to me is a bug. That shouldn't be. All right. Now, let me take it up to one. In other words, very a very low amount of sharpening, re relatively none. But you notice that noise goes away. So that, and that's only I'm finding in the low light mode, because if you go to, to the denoise mode and you pull your sharpness back, it doesn't let you go to zero. And you'll notice they have a little note here. If you want even less sharpening, use the low light mode. Okay, which is the mode I'm using. And if I click on that again, you, you'll see it lets me go to zero but noise comes back in and I don't like that. So that to me, that's a bug. So if you're watching Topaz, maybe you could fix that or let me know, is that the way it's supposed to be? I don't think so. But anyway, there you go. So there's my noise reduction, low light mode. And uh, I used the original auto to determine the amount of noise removal. And then I just backed off the sharpness. That's why it doesn't show auto here anymore. And I'm not messing around with the post-processing recover original detail or color noise reduction. I generally don't mess with that, to be honest with you. And I'm just going to go ahead and click apply. And that'll send us back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. I'm going to use my Tony Kuiper action and click this little plus here. Click it one, 
two, three times. And when I do, it takes me into 300%. By the way, you can also click this, these little icons that look like mountains here on the navigator uh, screen or display area. So if you click these, they go back to, uh, you know, like 100% of the time. Like there's 100% to 200% to 100% and then 66.67%. Okay, so I'll back it up to 300%. And we can see that the noise is totally gone. So here's the before and here is the after. So the noise removal is complete. Now I'm going to duplicate this background layer and I'm going to call this one Sharpen AI. And then we'll take care of the sharpening problem. I'll use my Tony Kuiper action to fit the screen. And now let's go ahead and launch Topaz Sharpen AI. And now we're in Sharpen AI. And if you watched my recent video on Sharpen AI tips, you'll know that I use this method where I like to use the uh, comparison mode where I see all the uh, different uh, types of sharpening on my screen, like the original, the sharpen, the stabilize, and the focus. And remember, I told you to make sure that auto update is turned on and that in settings, auto is set on the settings. And then go through your different modes and make sure auto is on for all the modes which it is in this case. And then just examine all four images. Of course, you're not going to pick the first one, right? Because it's the original. That wouldn't make sense. But we look at the sharpen image now. That doesn't look real good. Uh, the stabilized looks really good. And the focus looks, looks a little better than the sharpen, but the stabilized is definitely the winner. So that's my first step. My next step is, if you recall from that video, was to go to the side-by-side -side view and then pick the mode that looked the best from the comparison view, and that was Stabilize. So I'm going to go to Stabilize. I like the side-by-side -side view because it gives you a bigger previews. Okay, so the original is on your left. The uh, preview of the Sharpen Enhancement is on the right. And according to the comparison view, when I saw all the images, Stabilize was the one that I liked the best. Now, I'm going to shut the noise suppression off, so I'm just going to take it the whole way off. And it'll render itself back out here because I've already used noise reduction. I don't need to do noise reduction again. So now I'm going to take my sharpness and drag it the whole way to the right and see the result. And I'm not afraid to max out these sliders. I find you can get really good results even if you max out your slider. So that looks good. So compare the image on the left to the image on the right. And it's nice and clear. And I might just back it off a little bit, maybe to around a 90. I want that little bit of extra sharpening. And that looks good. I'll click apply and that'll send us back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop and it took my image close to a minute to render itself out and come back into Photoshop, uh, by the way, in case you're wondering. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom into this image here. I'm going to zoom in to, let's zoom into 300% so we can really get a look here. So here's my original image without noise reduction and without sharpening added. And here it is with noise reduction and sharpening added. Now, of course, I use denoise first and sharpen second. And if I take the sharpen AI layer right here and shut it off, here is the image with noise reduction only. And here it is with sharpening. And as you can see, it did a beautiful job. To save a little bit of time, I already have done the uh, sharpen first denoise second scenario for you so I don't have to bore you with going through that whole scenario again. So here's what I'm gonna, going to do. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the Sharpen AI layer and the Denoise AI layer and you're just going to right now see the original image right here that came right out of Lightroom with very minimal adjustments. No noise reduction or sharpening. And now I'll show you the uh, Denoise AI first and then I'll show you the Sharpen AI first and we'll compare the two. But I'm going to show you a little trick, and this is a really good pro tip for you here. Come up to Window in Photoshop and go to, where am I at? Yeah, I almost got lost here. Go to Arrange and come down to where it says Match All. And if you click Match All, it'll match all of the images that you have opened up in Photoshop. Now I'm in the uh, Consolidate Tabs mode here. So, so here's my original image. Here's my Sharpen AI image or I'm sorry, my Denoise AI first, Sharpen AI second. If you look at my layers, you can see Denoise AI was first, Sharpen AI was second, and it looks beautiful right now. Let's see the moment of truth here. Here, the next uh, image I show you will be uh, Sharpen AI first and Denoise AI second. Okay, so there it is. 
Now, really study it out here. I see a little bit of noise up in here. Now, I am still zoomed into 300%, but you'll see a little bit of noise in here. It doesn't look as sharp. Now, let me go back to the denoise AI first. Look how much sharper that is. Okay. Again, sharpen AI first, denoise AI first. Here's my original. So the original, denoise AI first, sharpen AI first, denoise AI first. So myth is solved, or I should say the case is solved. Not a myth, but the case is solved. I definitely recommend, and I always have, use denoise AI first and sharpen AI second. You're going to get the best results this way. And try this out for yourselves I think you'll find out that what I'm telling you is the best way to go. Well, there you go. And today I answered the question for you. Denoise AI first, sharpen AI first. Does it even matter? And yes, it really does matter. And ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I do present the winner to you. Topaz Denoise AI. Use it first and then use the wonderful sharpen AI second. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and also click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.